Okay, so now that I'm finally done with this week's video, I wanted to explain a little bit. Uh, we decided to have some fun. You know that movie, All is Lost, but with uh, Robert Redford, and it has about every single mistake a sailor can make? Now, I know we're pretty new sailors, but as a family, we thought, before we started season one, we got one more week, let's have another fun video, kind of like our top ten last week. And so we thought, let's get together and do our own Cinema Sins video on All is Lost. Now, if you guys don't know Cinema Sins, it's, a, it's another YouTube channel that makes fun of movies. My kids like it a lot, and so we thought we'd mimic their style, but apply it to All is Lost. So, season two starts next week, and until then, I hope you have fun with the video. 47 seconds of titles. Okay, look, movie, if you're going to make me read and it's a sailing movie, at least give us a direction. Just a basic direction of how many miles from where. 13th of July, 4.50 p.m. Didn't start with Captain's Log. I'm sorry. I know that means little at this point. Narration without exposition. It's inexcusable, really. I know that now. You are absolutely right. It was inexcusable. Okay, I'm just going to point this out now. Eight days? Eight days? You only brought enough supplies to last eight freaking days? Dude, saving your logbook first and then start thinking? Come on, man. More things to do right now. Up to it. All right, judging from the distance and the way the boat is going up and down in the water compared to the container, it seems to me he should be able to put your foot down and push your boat off. I know, I know, movie might have ended a little early this way, but hey. Dude, come on, seriously, your sails are up. Push off and tack. Push off and tack. Okay, so I know I just said it, and I'm probably going to repeat myself a lot in this movie, but dude, your sailboat won't heal to get that hole out of the water if your sails aren't up. Okay, throughout this movie, we've seen that he has tarps, canvases, hell, he's even got sails. And not once did he try to wrap a canvas around the outside of the hole and let the water try to suck it in and secure it. Not once. Okay, I get assessing the situation before calling for a mayday. I mean, there's still a lot to save on this boat. You probably don't need a mayday, but at least get on your radio and call for standby. Now, we don't know the radio's broken yet, but he hasn't even tried. That should have been the first thought on your head. Okay, I didn't think I'd really have to say this, but get on the container and move your boat! Don't try to move the container from your boat. Yeah, you should probably tether yourself before stepping onto the container. And this is not what a sea anchor is for, nor how to properly use it. And another thing not mentioned here is that he could go get his real anchor, throw some weight on the side of the boat, and heave too. I'm going to say this again, but dude, throw a tarp over your boat. Plug the hole. And by the way, does anybody notice that he's playing with the boat? He's saying, let's go to starboard. Oh, I'm filling up. Let's go to port. I'm good. Let's go to starboard. I'm filling up. Let's go to port. I'm good. God, he's like a kid playing with a plastic tugboat in a bathtub. Shipping Container Company Product Placement. Polluting the Ocean. Okay, I'm just going to bring up physics again, since we're watching a sailing movie. But a container full of shoes, the hole is below the water line. I mean, think about it. A container full of shoes and the hole is below the water line. This baby is not sitting there floating. This container is sinking. And sunk a long time ago. But hey, movie's got a movie, yo. You know you can go get your sea anchor, right? And let's go ahead and send these shoes. Sink in this container is a waste of third world child labor. And a sin for us for even making that joke. Okay, you still have not thought of calling anybody for a May Day standby? And look at that perfectly furled mainsail. When we just saw him rushing that thing down and quickly tying it up. I guess we didn't feel like doing any continuity in this one? He hit it again! He intentionally hit it again! No fenders, no bumpers, I mean, come on man, are you trying to sink? Because you're doing a damn good job of it on your own. Okay, that's a tough book. I had one at, when I worked in the coal mines, as a mechanic, and while I was in the military. And let me tell you something, even being buried in water for a little bit, that thing's gonna work. 
You know, there's a lot better things you could be doing right now, like uh, saving food, drying the radio, working on taping the hole, anything. He has duct tape. He shows us he has duct tape. Why the hell weren't you trying to duct tape the hole? And I gotta ask, how is it that you're having to manufacture a handle for your manual bilge pump? Why are you suddenly, now that it's an emergency, having to, either the movie doesn't explain it, or you didn't have a proper inventory on the safety pieces of your boat? Also, I just want to point out that he hasn't even tried to start his engine yet. Also, also, he didn't even try to use the water pump from the engine to pump out his boat. Movie can of beans cliche. Also, tighten that jib sheet, man. Your sail's luffing. Also, also, how is he out here with no bucket? <sighs> You're stopping your repair to sleep? Come on, man. You could have never made it in the Navy. Also, you stop in the middle of a repair just to start pumping out your boat? There's no water coming in right now if you're repairing, man. Look, man, you just need to finish one job at a time. And right now, it's that repair. Buck up, put your bootstraps on. Oh my god, he stopped again. This guy is like ADD nuts. Now don't get me wrong, I got ADD pretty bad, but when you're an emergency repair man, you do it until it's finished. Fix the hole in your boat. <coughs> Fixing stuff, montage cliche. <coughs> man, maybe you should have worked for a living because anybody who's worked any kind of blue collar job whatsoever knows you do not wear your ring. Take off your ring. It's another injury that's probably just going to happen that you obviously aren't equipped to deal with. Why aren't you eating your fruit, dude? You have fresh fruit. Why are you eating a can of beans? That's what you need is your fresh fruit. Get your produce and stores done first. Come on, man. Also, bad luck to have bananas on a boat. I'm starting to get the feeling that I don't think the producers or the director brought in a single consultant that knows how to sail for this movie. And I know what you're saying. You're going to give me some crap about how this is a movie about how somebody who's inexperienced and what could happen. Well, if he's in the middle of the Indian Ocean and he's American and he's been traveling for that long with what's obviously an American bought boat with American stuff, he should definitely know what he's doing by now. So that is no excuse. Sin! One thing I gotta bring up that most people are gonna agree on is when you're alone out at sea, if you are any kind of a sailor, there would have been a lot more dialogue. And that would have been in shouting, cussing, and cursing. I can't even work on a boat without cussing it out. Uh, you're gonna have to do a lot better of a repair than that, man. Okay, I know some people like to do four or five, but Three wraps around the wrench, dude. At least three wraps around the wrench. Come on, man. This is basic sailing 101. And does anybody else notice he doesn't even have a dinghy? Yeah, you're going to want to leave your charts inside and hang them up to dry from in there. You take them outside with a little bit of wind, all they're going to do is rip up while hanging. Well, it's a good thing it's a picture book. He'll be able to learn trick and navigate off the stars in no time. It's that easy, y'all! Alright, and I know this movie was made before global positioning satellites were really in civilian use, EPIRBs, and AIS systems, but come on, man. Satellite phones were around then. You're in the middle of an ocean. No satellite phone? And the drinking all the alcohol down cliche, because when you're in a bad mood, you don't want to make it last a little bit, right? Also, no water. Oh, this is so frustrating, but dude, why are you not catching water? It is fresh water raining all over your boat. Get your ass out there and catch some water. Catch as much water as you can. Come on, man. Do we need to hold your hand here? Which this reminds me, I don't think having any kind of a sailing consultant was in the company's budget for this film. Okay, so now he can cook? Hell, I thought all he had was cold cans of beans. Uh, you left your dish out, dude. On the ocean, that will slide off the table and break. Just letting you know in case you haven't figured that out by now. 
And just to bring up a sin from earlier in the movie, why isn't his mainsail folded up all nicely this time? Mask climbing with no helmet. I also must say, maybe this is the mechanic in me, but a mask climbing is not an easy nor a small insignificant task. So if you're going to climb up there, inspect every single component and piece of rigging that you can. A crescent wrench? A freaking crescent wrench? Oh, this is so infuriating. Also, crescent wrenches are not supposed to be used for anything but a hammer. Also, also, most likely he would have stripped out bolts here with that damn crescent wrench. Hey man, just so you don't lose a finger or some serious skin or maybe break something, do you want to take off that ring finally and maybe put on a set of gloves? I'm also wondering why I didn't even dry off at least one cushion. I mean, at least one to sleep on. Come on. He's had plenty of good weather. <laughs> Shaven? Well, the storm's coming. <laughs> Do I need to say it again? But yes, you're in a big storm, you're in rough seas, you have no PFD and no harness. Look, I love Robert Redford, and I know the studio probably spent a pretty penny with him getting this role. But how expensive can it be to find one old salt that knows half of what he's doing? I wonder if he thought that he could have put on the foul weather gear, well, you know, while he was shaving. Ugh, this guy is so incompetent, I'm thinking he was a, I don't know, an executive of some kind? Maybe management? Oh, I know! It was probably written by Hollywood writers that have no experience in the field that they're writing in. Eh, that makes sense. Okay, why would you slide your gangway door open all the way in the rain? Keep it somewhat shut, man. It's like a half-open window. Come on. Anybody else notice he just threw down his planks and left his gangway open while he got up into the cockpit for a while? All right, guess you're helping your leak situation, aren't you? Well, I guess he's not concerned anymore about water getting in his boat. Again. Okay, so let me get this straight. He has had a harness this entire time, but now he decides to start digging it out? I mean, this executive, or character, or sailor, or whatever you want to call him, is slower than a herd of tortoises stampeding through peanut butter. Okay, at this point, I don't know if I should be laughing or feeling sorry for anybody watching this movie. First of all, you are not not going to pull yourself up in this boat in full weather gear while the boat's moving with the current what is wrong with this did the writers go hey we're gonna do a sailing movie that's probably gonna cater to sailors but you know what we're gonna we're just not gonna pay attention to physics how's that and the director said yeah let's make let's just throw physics out the window sailors love that they don't like physics at all and the producers were sitting around going i want to go sailing and don't give me that crap this is for non-sailors because all this movie does is teach them what not to do, but doesn't even tell them that. And now you decide to switch the sails. Come on, man. Reef often, reef early. Not in the middle of a freaking storm. So I'm trying to figure out what exactly he accomplished here. A uh, new headsail hanked on? Didn't you just dry these cushions? Why would you lay down on him with foul weather gear after you just dried him? Man, this guy causes more work for himself than, than a cat trying to take a crap on a hot tin roof. Anybody else know that a port window is open while he's rolling around in his boat? It's open and no water's coming in. In the next shot, you'll see it closed. Continuity, friends. Continuity. After everything he's been through, still no harness. I guess now's a good time to finally put out the sea anchor. Also, also, if you weren't mad enough at the first time he fell off his boat and was able to pull his way back on against all physics logic, we're going to make it much worse for you this time with a rogue wave. Woo, Hollywood! Again, I'm going to ask, why can't he heave to? Also, also, cut, man! You're in the water! Cut, 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 cut! Should have a knife on you anyway. All right, the mast is a clean break and on the boat. Save as much as you can, if not the whole thing, so you can rig up something to put up some sails later. Haven't you ever seen a drift? 
Oh, that's right. That's in the category of real survival and, and good sailing movies. <laughs> he left that gangway open the entire time. How did this new hole happen? Did they ever explain? Or is it just one of those random... Well, whatever. I'm about tired of this movie. So let me get this straight. His first thought this time is not to sit there and cover the boat and pump, but to just abandon ship? Oh, I see why. They need to move the plot along. Gotcha. Understood. Ah, Hollywood. Where he could be surrounded by huge-ass waves, but stand fairly easy on the deck. Why would you put it out now? I mean, just it floating back there, that's a pretty good chance of losing your lifeboat, dude. Okay, so you're telling me that all the writers got together and said, Hey, you know what? Jumping in the lifeboat right now with no harness, no PFD, and very little water that he could have collected during all that rain is the best solution? That's the best solution that they could come up with in this writer's room? And this is why you don't go cheap for your script writers by hiring some kid right out of college. First thing I have to yell at this guy is, Dude, stay on your boat! As long as you can, until it actually sinks. Second thing, he has a little dicky survival bag, but not really a go bag? Way to prepare for an emergency, dude. So, being in the lifeboat and staying tied up to your boat is the best solution? Dude, what if it sank while you were sleeping? It would have dragged your ass right under. <sighs> I still don't know if this is the writers, the director, or the producers, but somebody ought to be fired for this garbage. Dude, this shouldn't be a loss. It is perfect weather out. Start pumping, man. Start pumping. Hey, did you pack a can opener? What about the radio? Bring wires? Dry it out? Couple small tools? I mean, think about it. You can make an antenna and you can get that thing to work. Maybe a little battery? This is all fixable, man. Even on a light boat. I know they had to get the use of the mysterious sextant in here, but it only measures longitude. What are you going to do about measuring latitude? How are you finding your exact position on the chart? Hey, experienced sailors want to know this, man. Have you figured out a way to use the sextant to find latitude? Let me know. Those butterfly stitches are not going to stick. You didn't clean it up enough, and there's still a lot of residual stuff on your skin. And yet, somehow Hollywood is going to tell me they will. Okay, time to shave. Oh, sorry. Now it's probably too late, but you had the time. How come he didn't take any line? Why didn't he bring one of his gangway planks for a paddle? I, there's just so much to this movie that's so bad. And you know, Robert Redford is a real treasure. I mean, he's an American treasure. One of my favorite movies is Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, and he was perfect for it. But how he got roped into doing this movie, or should I say lined into doing this movie, see what I did there? I'll never know. Okay, so you brought your brand new sextant. Did you happen to bring that picture book you had earlier? Dude, why drink that water first? I saw you bring your jerry can full of fresh water. Hey, those are reef fish. You're close to land. You see those little round tinted things on your sextant? Those are sun filters. They make it so you don't go blind. I bet that hurts right now. So, let me get this straight. His rescue boat is full of water. It's calm out there. And this time there wasn't even a container or anything to pop it. I can't think of anything of why this scene would be in here, except for the writers going, hey, we're halfway through the movie and we ran out of ideas. So let's just, let's just start over again. Man, look at his cut. This guy heals faster than Wolverine from X-Men. I know the production was probably under a tight scheduling, but it's foggy out. Why are you using your sextant when it's foggy out? Oh, it's like the director of this movie thinks we're stupid. Why does he keep turning his light on wasting batteries? I mean, this guy's been sailing on the ocean. Is he afraid of the dark or something? Oh, look, more of just repeating what already happened earlier in the movie. Copy-paste, y'all. And since the last half of this movie is just going to be a repeat of the first half of this movie, scene for scene, let's get his boat upside down again. Fuck! His first line of the whole frickin' movie and, oh man, do we feel his pain. 
You know, I don't think he was acting here. I think he was actually showing us his emotions about this movie being made. Okay, this is a great visual and all, but catch some damn fish. Don't just look at them. Start doing something, man. That'll help you with your water problem as well. There are plenty of other things that are better to make a still out of than cutting open a jug that you could otherwise use to fill with rainwater when it comes. Movie goes to great length to show us that there are still fish down there, but he's lost all hope, even though he only carried eight days of food and water. Well, the water was contaminated, we understand. But eight days of food. A lot of that food, especially the canned stuff, has water in it. He should be well off right now, but no, he's so hopeless he doesn't even want to fish. That's what they're trying to tell us. <sighs> and, by the way, even if there were no fish around, would you be dragging a line anyway? I would. Okay, daytime, ship probably has radar, a few other things, and he's that close, and you're telling me that nobody standing on watch or on the bridge saw him in the water? Are we supposed to believe that for a second? Oh, I forgot. We're not far enough into the movie, and the movie's got to keep going. Belay my last. I apologize. <laughs> of course. Hollywood cliche. Also, spear the shark, maybe? I know you have a knife on board. You already showed us earlier. You should be ready with that shit, man. Okay, I might be able to suspend disbelief because this is at night, and of course, especially in more foreign vessels, you get a lot of sleepers on watch, but come on, man. Full moon, flares, somebody would have seen this shit. I think, at this point, you're just padding the runtime. So, I'd like to point out here, the people that may not know that your inflatable boat will not just stay half inflated for the sake of a movie. Pickle jar. Skip! You know, right now, he has a makeshift paddle in his hand. Okay, you brought on more flares. I saw it earlier in the movie. And it didn't show anything about those flares going bad or you even trying them. So are you trying to tell me that your best answer right now is starting a fire in your frickin' boat? This is your last chance? Starting a fire in your boat? Ugh, I gotta go back to this one here. So he still has no PFD. He just decides to drown and not even swim in all of his gear. He starts a fire in his frickin' boat when he finally sees somebody. I mean, at this point I'm not even rooting for the character. I'm hoping he drowns. Executive or management or not, natural selection, baby! So you're telling me by the camera angle that he's in about 30, maybe 40 feet of water in a black ocean at night and these people somehow are able to find him and save him and pull him up? I don't think so. And for one final sin, nowhere in this movie did I see rum or rum on board. 